Hey guys, it's Carla. Today I'm painting a rose. I'm using an 8x10 canvas panel and acrylic paint. I've got white, unbleached titanium, magenta, phthalo blue, yellow, raw sienna, and raw umber. So I'm going to start with my background, which is fairly abstract. Um, I'm starting with blue and white and a little, little touch of magenta. And I'm using synthetic angle brushes and they're very worn out and, um, you know, I can... I can do what I want with them and not worry about ruining them. It's good to have brushes like that, so um, if you've got some, I would suggest using them for this. So we just wanna kinda of block in the color, and I'm not, notice I'm not being careful with my outline because I want my edges to be, I don't want them to be sharp and defined. I want them uh, almost kinda of blurry, I guess. So I'm not gonna get right up to my outline and, and be perfect with it. Now I'm mixing up some green. And honestly, you can just create your own background for this. It's, um, it's just color. The blue indicates sky and the green indicates foliage, but you can do whatever you want back there, and then we'll be putting in the the bokeh, which is the little circles of light. This is kind of the boring part, but it's gotta be done, and you can get creative with it and come up with your own background, like I said, and um, make it make it your own. Notice I'm being real loose and carefree with this. Just, I don't want it to be tight and um, with hard lines and stuff. Now I'm adding some brown just to kind of darken some of the areas. Again, this is just personal preference. So however you want your background, that's there's no right or wrong way to do it. It does help if you work a little bit fast on this part so that all the paint stays wet and you can blend it as you go. All of my brushes today are just old synthetic angle brushes, just different sizes. So obviously you'll you'll just use whatever size fits 
the area better. So when, you, when you're working toward the center of the rose, you're gonna use a smaller brush, obviously, because it's smaller petals. Now I'm drying the background so that I can start on my bokeh. I'm picking up a little bit of unbleached titanium and just circling these bokeh on. And with bokeh, uh, some of it is kind of faded, like maybe even blurry, but really just faded. And then some of it is bright. So I'm going to go ahead and put in different ones and then I'll come back later and brighten up my, my brighter ones because, as you know, uh, acrylic paint kind of dulls as it dries, so the white sometimes needs brightened up a little bit. And you can put different color bokeh back here, but I like to stick with them more um, natural looking, like the unbleached titanium, the white, um, a little yellow sometimes. It's also nice, like I did right there, to um, overlap. That helps it look more natural. Now these white ones look bright right now, but when they dry, I will have to come back and brighten them up because again, they do dull down. I'm mixing up kind of a dark green shade um, for my leaves and then a little bit lighter shade. I want two different shades for my leaves. Now this is just a leaf. Um, 
where the the little buds are. There's another bud. Now, see what I'm doing with my finger? I'm blurring out the edges. I'm gonna do that with the whole flower. So anytime I get to the edge, to the background, I'm gonna use my finger and blur it out because I don't want any hard edges. It just kind of softens the painting and makes it look like it's not pasted on there like the flowers not pasted on. Now the outline um, for the rose, if you want to go to my Facebook page, it will be on there um, in the I'll post the um, the video on my Facebook page and then in the comments I'll post a picture of the reference photo so you can um, you can print that out and trace it onto your canvas or just print it out to to look at while you paint All that information will be in the description below. Now I'm putting in some darker colors in my foliage to give it um, dimension. If you only use one color, one shade of green, it's going to look very flat. Now I'm using my larger angle brush and I want to mix up kind of a light purple shade and with that I'm going to paint the whole flower. Um, I'm covering my lines and everything. Um, if you don't make your paint too thick or too opaque then you'll still be able to see your 
your outline underneath. And you can even thin it down with um, either glazing liquid or water if you're worried about covering your pencil lines. If you thin it down, it it will be um, a little more transparent and you won't lose your lines. And remember to blur out those edges anytime you you're painting painting against the background just blur out the edges so I've got the whole thing covered and now I want to mix up that same shade but I mean the same color but a darker shade of it and start going in around my outlines and putting in my darker areas so what you'll do at this point is just look at the reference photo and um, just start on your darker areas now I didn't dry this so I'm having a hard time Uh, getting it to stay as dark as I want it. So, I am going to have to stop and dry it before I can finish. Okay, so I'm drying it. Get it good and dry. Okay. Now my dark color will show up better because it's not mixing with that lighter shade that's that's already on there. Now you may not be able to see my pencil lines on the monitor, but I can just barely see them. So like I said, if you want to thin down that base coat so that you don't lose your lines, that might be a good idea. So I'm just looking at my reference photo and just um, finding all my darkest areas And I'll come back and darken them later, but I want to go ahead and get them in there and start defining my petals. And with these um, old angle brushes, synthetic angle brushes, you can almost scrub the paint on because, like I said, if you're not worried about ruining your brushes, because they're already old, then you can kind of do what you want to with them and not worry about it. Okay, so I've got the darker color in. And now I want to add more of a um, magenta shade. Again, this is personal preference. You could have a whole different color rose if you want. Um, you could do a yellow rose or blue or whatever. But right here, I'm just um, kind of pinkening it up a little bit, just in spots. And just use whichever size brush you feel comfortable with in the area that you're working. And see how that allows um, some of the purple to still show through, but 
it kind of changes the, the flavor a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of be selective and go around and put in all the pink that I want. All right. Now I'm gonna mix up a lighter shade of pink with my, um, I'm not using white, I'm using unbleached titanium with the magenta. Uh, you can use white, but white would give you more of a pink color where this gives you kind of a, almost a peach color. Um, and I'm being very selective where I put this on the highlighted areas. And I'm also watching my brush strokes. So, um, you know, there's kind of a grain to petals and I wanna keep my brush strokes going with the grain when where the brush strokes are gonna show. So like I'm using the, the edge of my angle brush when I want a hard line, and then I'm just brushing back in toward the center of the petal, toward the center of the flower. Okay, so I've got all that in. Now I'm lightening it even more, adding more unbleached titanium to that shade. And I'm gonna continue to do the same thing. I, I just want to brighten up my uh, more highlighted petals and in my mind, I've got my light coming from the upper right corner. So if you imagine where your light source is coming from, then you'll know which petals and which edges to highlight more. So if you'll notice on the reference photo, the on the left-hand side, is it's a little darker not there's not as much highlighting over there but petals always go toward the center of the rose so when you're doing your brush strokes if your brush strokes are going to show they need to go in that direction so that um, it looks more natural. Like I said, I'm using this my smallest brush in this center part because there's little small lines. All right, so I've got all that highlight color on. And now I'm going in with just, I'm not mixing any magenta with it. I'm, going in with just the unbleached titanium and highlighting some more. I don't want to, each time I go lighter, I don't want to cover up my previous shade. So I'm not putting as much of it on there. I'm just kind of skipping around and highlighting where I want it to be brighter. Okay, now I'm going in with just plain white. So when you're using just plain white, you want to be very careful with it and not uh, not go overboard with it because white is um, not a color you see much. When you when you think you see white, you're really seeing um, a kind of a different shade of white, you know, kind of a dirty white. Rarely do you see bright white, so just be careful with it. Sometimes the edges of petals, when they catch the light, 
are pretty bright and pretty sharp. So where along along the um, background where where I blur it out with my finger, you don't want to do this on these sharp petals. You want them to stay sharp. But again, be careful with the white. Just don't use too much of it. Okay, now I'm putting some darker, deeper colors into my greenery. Add more dimension to it. Now I'm using magenta for my um, rosebuds. And I don't want these to be real defined. I don't want uh, I don't want them to be extremely obvious. So just kind of subtle. Touching up my leaves around the buds. And I'm just kind of stumbling in some different shades into the buds. I'm using a yellow and white mixture to um, lighten some of the areas of my leaves. A lot of this, as you paint it, you're just going to see um, things that you want to change or or add or sometimes leave out. Don't ever feel like you have to paint exactly what I'm painting. This is just an idea, it's a reference. That's all it is. It just shows you techniques on how to create your own 
if you choose to. It's hard to tell what I'm doing right here, but it's I'm just adding in different shades to give it dimension. Now, if you look at the flower right now and then look at the reference photo, um, you can tell that the reference photo has a lot more depth to it. So, it's real important to put in your darker areas and your lighter areas so that you have that, that contrast and that dimension. I had a, um, an art teacher in school that really preached to me about not being afraid to add uh, dark colors, black even sometimes, and uh, to create the depth. And so I've never forgotten that. And that's probably been the most useful tip I've had about art is don't be afraid of the dark. So I added in some more pink, and now I want to darken up those darkest areas. You can use what you any shade of dark. Um, you could use blue and brown. Those those colors together give you almost a black shade, or uh, you can use the blue and the magenta and when you when you add more blue than magenta then you'll get like a dark violet color so anything dark you just you want to really darken up those shadow areas And you can really get creative with this, with the coloring on the rose. Um, sometimes it's pretty when you have like this color of rose to come in with yellow in areas and just very subtly brush some yellow in there. I didn't do it on this one, but um, that really does add a lot to it. switch into my smaller brush to get into some of these tighter areas. Again, keep the edges sharp, but then keep your brush strokes uh, going with the grain of the petal.
And I'm brightening up my white bokeh. And guys, if you wonder about my um, my little turntable thing that my that I put my canvas on, that's all it is. It's a plastic turntable. You can order it through Amazon, and um, I think this one costed like seven dollars or whatever. They have different sizes, um, but it makes makes it really easy to turn your canvas and get the angles you want. Now I'm adding a little bit of yellow to my leaves because once they dry, you know, you can really tell then what what they need so wait till they dry and see if you need to add more of anything now mix in a little bit of white and a little unbleached titanium and just kind of putting some not not outlines on these but little highlights on my buds all right guys that's it i hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching